and we are recording. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Killian. Hi, friends. Happy Saturday. Hope you're having a lovely beginning of a Miner's Day weekend. Miner's Day, as we call it here in Park City. It's fun. As we always do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh, dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. To the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Today is the feast day of, you know, Mother Teresa. Today is St. Teresa of Calcutta Day. <clears throat> Someone who I think has affected a lot of us, like even personally. So that's great. Let's keep going. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, learn from myself and Apollos not to go beyond what is written, so that none of you will be inflated with pride in favor of one person over against another. Who confers distinction upon you? What do you possess that you have not received? But if you have received it, why are you boasting as if you did not receive it? You are already satisfied. You have already grown rich. You have become kings without us. Indeed, I wish that you had become kings so that we also might become kings with you. For as I see it, God has exhibited us apostles as the last of all, like people sentenced to death. Since we have become a spectacle to the world, the angels and men alike. We are fools on Christ's account, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we in disrepute. To this very hour, we go hungry and thirsty. We are poorly clad and roughly treated. We wander about homeless and we toil, working with our own hands. When ridiculed, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we respond gently. We have become like the world's rubbish, the scum of all, to this very moment. I am writing you this not to shame you, but to admonish you as my beloved children. Even if you should have countless guides to Christ, yet you do not have many fathers, for I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's responsorial psalm is, the Lord is near to all those, to all who call upon him. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord keeps all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. May my mouth speak the praise of the Lord, and may all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While Jesus was going through a field of grain on a Sabbath, his disciples were picking the heads of grain, rubbing them in their hands, and eating them. Some Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus said to them in reply, Have you not read what David did when he and those who were with him were hungry? How he went into the house of God, took the bread of offering, which only the priests could lawfully eat, ate of it, and shared it with his companions? Then he said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, happy Sabbath, everyone. <laughs> Honestly, this, so this Gospel is worth mentioning. And it's, we, we talked about it actually already today in the, in the little email that we send out. The <clears throat> point of this is... Honestly, don't let yourselves be too caught up in that which is you think is absolutely the right thing because you have to do it. There's a part of this which is do the right thing, which is prudent and which is wise and which is honestly the right thing. There's a, there's a moral aspect here, obviously. You know, it's, it's actually not work to you know, give, you food, give yourself food on the Sabbath. That's not work. And um, the Lord is being very clear about this, honestly walking through a field and taking a couple heads of grain, right? Okay. Very, very, very illegal. <sighs> no, we should be much more chill and much more clear. It's, it's kind of a funny set of readings today because that section that we have from Corinthians, it's actually kind of an admonition, like, look, we did this for you. Respect us. You say like, it's, it's kind of almost a little bit petty and that's not really what Paul is getting at after all. The, the section of this particular pericope of that little piece of writing there, which is most used, is that which deals with how to behave when you are being persecuted. You know, we are attacked and therefore we bless. We are being persecuted and therefore we are patient. That, that kind of back and forth there, uh, which indicates a lot about Paul. But, you know, let's remember, this is the Sabbath after all. It is a first Saturday, and it's important to remember, <clears throat> especially Our Lady on Saturdays and first Saturdays particularly, but use the Saturday well. Go back to the gospel. What is the Saturday for, really? You know, we have lots of days in our week. We have lots of days in our life. Maybe we're in a place in our life where actually every day is pretty much exactly the same, and it's hard to distinguish them. Maybe we're in a point in our life when Saturday is like the one day that we don't have something scheduled. Maybe it's the one day that we do have something scheduled. Who knows? But it's a good reminder that in the midst of all these things, there is something which is called rest. And that should really kind of be our theme for the weekend, right? Because this is the weekend when we as a country come together and talk about rest, actually. This is the... This is the leisure time of the year. This is the end of summer. This is when we ostensibly celebrate that which labor gives us and all the rest of those things. So what is it that we do for rest? How do we do leisure? What is it about the Sabbath, whenever the Sabbath is, whether that's today, tomorrow, or all the days, who knows, in terms of rest, what is it that makes it special? A good thing to ask ourselves, and one that I hope has some answer in there somewhere. The, the, the truth of the matter is I think that we are often very bad at finding rest, certainly on, on, a, on a kind of a weekly basis. This is why people like go away to do vacation kinds of things elsewhere, because in their normal life, in the, that, that rhythm of day to day, we don't do it. So. <clears throat> that's also as old as the hills. After all, there had to be a whole part of the law, a great big old part of the law on things not to do on the Sabbath. Like, don't be collecting food on the Sabbath. There's a reason why there's a, 
part of our human existence, which is needing that corrective. Still, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. What is it about the Sabbath that is of God? What is it about any day that is of God? Hopefully a lot of things. This is why we're here after all. Today happens to be the feast day of St. Teresa of Calcutta, uh, the 5th of September, here we are. It's an interesting day. Uh, Mother Teresa is someone that a lot of us probably know pretty well, maybe even have met. This is someone who is not a long time ago, but very, very recent. Kind of um, a fun way to think about it. We're coming up to three Teresa days. So today we have Mother Teresa, the new saint in the calendar. Think of her as like the, the, the littlest one. Then we have like the next bigger one uh, in about a month for, you know, St. Therese of Lisieux. And then we have like very big Teresa, Teresa of Avila in a little bit more than that. So it's kind of like Teresa season. Another interesting way to think about that. St. Teresa, little Teresa and littlest Teresa, all of them Teresa. Putting, just putting it in perspective after all. And certainly Mother Teresa, I think would have appreciated that and felt you know, good to be in that company. The stories of Mother Teresa are pretty spectacular after all. Um, what can I do? Go and clean this thing. People ask her, what can I do to be of help? Go and spit, sit, go and sit with this person. You know, these are the kinds of stories that we have of Mother Teresa. Also the same Mother Teresa who uh, addresses the UN and rails against those things which are contrary to life. Also the same um, St. Mother Teresa, my favorite story is one from when she visited the North American College in Rome where I went to seminary and insisted she would not speak to the anyone. She would not speak to the seminarians, the address that she had planned until the Blessed Sacrament was brought back to the main chapel, to the center because at that time it was not. All of these, all of these are little vignettes of St. Mother Teresa, not just a, a woman who was trying to do nice things, but also one who was preaching the truth and one who respected that which is holy so much. There are lots of stories about her and I don't think we need to go into that. But the thing about Mother Teresa, I think which is always the most compelling is her radical charity, right? We talk about charity pretty much every day here. We talk about that thing, which is the action of faith, faith made tangible here on coffee every day. And there's a reason why, because that's where it actually matters. But today is Saturday after all, in fact, a day of leisure. Is there a place for charity in leisure? The answer is an unequivocal yes, of course. In fact, that is the best kind of pleasure. There is a charity that we express with each other just simply by enjoying the time. One of the most valuable things that we can give to people is, after all, our time. Not to be neglected and not to be let aside. That which is simply the enjoyment of time. So on this kind of, you know, last Saturday of the summer or whatever, do it. Enjoy the day. Do so. Let that be a kind of prayer even. This is a wonderful time to be together. This is a wonderful time to enjoy the weather that we have. In fact, you know, there's, there is a religious part to the weather. I'm not, I don't talk about the weather every day just because like, I don't have anything to say. No, it is actually one of these things which is a manifestation of the glory of God, after all. Enjoy it. As we always do, let's bring together our prayers and offer them to our Lord. He will hear and answer us. For an end to the global coronavirus pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those suffering from the disease, either physically, financially, or emotionally, are healed and fully recovered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That a spirit of unity come to the American people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Catholic faithful remain close to the Lord during these times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
For who else or what else shall we pray? Sandra asked that we please pray for her nephew, Ryan, who was just tested positive for COVID. And Barbara asked similarly for the healing of her son, Ryan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Sandra asked that we please pray for their family, strength and courage to get through their father's issues. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And through the intercession of St. Monica, let us pray for all our family members outside the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. God, who called the Virgin St. Teresa to respond to the love of your son thirsting on the cross with outstanding charity to the poorest of the poor, grant, we beseech you, by your intercession, to minister to Christ in our suffering brothers and sisters, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Great. Nice and easy and short, as it should be on a Saturday. Let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church. To the same Christ our Lord. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. All right. Everyone have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy the outside, look up to the sky, and be in the presence of God in the wonder of nature. It's actually a worthwhile thing. Do it, It'd be great, enjoy. All right, see you all tomorrow. And happy Labor Day weekend. Thank you, Father. Hi, Father. Thank you. Thanks Bye -bye. so much. Bye. Bye.